Turntable renderings can be set up in a number of different ways. For the sake of this tutorial, I will be using for the most part this model here to demo, let's say, the showcase model. For instance, if you had a character that you wanted to showcase, or a weapon, or even an environmental piece. Make sure that everything else is cleared from the scene, hidden, and unable to cast or receive lighting. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and start building the foundation for our actual animation of our turntable. Let me turn off my save frames by clicking Shift F. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to go up to our top view. Within our Create tab in our Command Panel, let's go over to our Cameras, and we'll choose a free camera. We'll also make sure that our angle snap is on when we've created this, and I'm going to rotate this towards our mesh. Once we've created that, the next thing is I want to make sure that I have a nice camera angle. So let's move the camera around a little bit until we feel satisfied. Now before we get into any of the rendering setup, one of the key components to actually getting the proper camera angle is to make sure that you have the right safe frames or dimensions to your rendering. So we'll open up our rendering tab by clicking F10. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the width here to 1000. We'll lock our aspect ratio, close this, and then adjust our camera further. So I am pretty satisfied with this camera angle. Now the next thing is we don't want to lose this camera angle, especially if we're going to be rendering multiple shots. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to lock the transforms of the camera, making sure that our camera is selected, which it is, and we'll go ahead and rename this right now. So we'll call this angle main. Clicking on our hierarchy tab and within our link info, we want to lock all of our moving capabilities, rotating capabilities, and our scale capabilities. Now it doesn't matter how much you try, you can't move it, rotate it, or change it. Let's go ahead and leave our camera view by clicking on V, which will activate a viewport's dropdown. And in here we can actually choose between a whole slew of different viewports. We'll click on Perspective View. An alternative to this is simply clicking on P, which will change it to Perspective View, or L, T, and so on. The next thing that we want to do is we want to rotate the camera around the object, since this is a turntable style animation. We'll go back to our Create tab, and inside of our shapes, we want to simply click on the circle spline and create one in the viewport. The radius isn't too important, however you do want it to encompass your object, at least where you can see it outside the bounds of your mesh. Once the position is correct, we're going to lock the ability to move the spline. Going back to the hierarchy tab within the link info, we'll make sure to lock the X, Y, and Z ability to move. So now you can see that we can't move it. However, we can still rotate it. Now, As a side note, we don't want to rotate it on any of the incorrect axes, for instance on the Y axis. We just want to rotate it on the z-axis. So what we can do is we can lock the x and y. And now you'll see that no matter which axis we try to rotate it in, it'll only rotate in the z-axis. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to select our camera and we're going to link it to our spline. Now let's click on N to activate our keyframing animation. I'm going to right click with the time slider set to zero and actually place only a rotation keyframe. We'll then scrub to the end of our timeline and rotate this by 360 degrees. You can now see that as we play through the animation, the camera will rotate around the object nicely. However, we see that at the end and the beginning, it actually slows down, and that's simply because of the curve. So let's select our two keyframes here, open up our curve controls, and set the tangents to linear. 
you'll now be able to see that we get a nice smooth rotation around the object that never speeds up nor slows down. If we actually go into our camera view, then you can see what the turntable looks like. This might be a little bit fast. That can simply be modified by grabbing hold of our spline object, right clicking on any of our play options here, and setting our end time to something greater, like 250. We'll then grab the last keyframe and drag it to 250. You'll now notice that as we play through, the turntable actually goes a lot slower. With that set up, let's move on to our lighting. Building studio lighting is very diverse, and it really does depend on the style in which you want to create. For this situation, we're going to use a pretty simple setup that yields really nice results. Let's first set up our rendering tab. We'll click on F10, drop to the bottom, and assign our mental ray renderer. Within our global illumination, we're not going to set up too many things at the moment. We simply want to make sure that our final gather precision is set to draft mode, and our diffuse bounces are set to 2. Now that we've done that, we're going to create our focal light. Within our Create tab, we'll go to the Lights and make sure that you're on Photometric. We'll then choose Mental Ray Sky Portal. Within the Dimensions, we want to make sure that this is set to a length of 128 and a width of 512. We'll also set the multiplier to 10, and we'll choose a color in a little bit. But for now, let's make sure that this is visible to the render. We'll also choose Custom. Within our Material Map Browser, we're going to choose a Kelvin Temperature Map. We'll also open up our material editor and drag this to a map slot here and make sure that it's set to instance. For our Kelvin temperature, we're going to choose 3650. For our intensity, we'll choose 3. Let's also make sure that the Z position of this light is the same Z position as this object. Having done that, let's go to our pivot options and make sure to zero out the pivot in our Y. We will create two extra instances of this light by holding down the shift key, left clicking and dragging. What we now want to do is group all of our objects, go to our pivot, align it to the world, then hold shift and create another set of instances on the other side of the object. We'll grab both groups and explode them. Let's also create a box. Now the purpose of the box is actually to deflect light and to help with reflection and uniqueness with the model. We'll set up the dimensions so that the box is 1800 by 1800 by 1500. We'll also make sure that the box's location is zeroed out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to an editable poly. Select all of the polygon surfaces and flip them. If we enter our camera here, what we should see is something roughly like this. Let's go to our environment tab here and in the exposure control, we'll choose mental ray photographic exposure control. Now we have the option for selecting some presets or using the exposure value, but for this situation, we're going to manually set up our own exposure. So here for the shutter speed, I want 0.35. For the aperture, I'm gonna choose four. And then for the film ISO, I'm gonna choose 300. Inside of our image control, we have different options here for our highlights burn, our midtones, and our shadows. Let's do a quick render preview, and then we'll modify those as we see fit. For our highlights burn here, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 1. And for our shadows, let's try a value of 0.8. I'm also not sure that I like the white point. Let's adjust this just a bit. Okay, so now that we've got those set up, let's do a test render.
Now you can see that the lighting is looking pretty good, however it does look a little bit blown out. That also is due to the materials. So once we create our fill light, then we'll modify the materials to fit the scene and the light settings. We'll go back to our perspective view and we're going to create our last light inside of our create tab. We'll create a new mental ray sky portal with dimensions of 1800 by 1800. We'll also make sure this is zeroed out. And I'm going to move this up towards the top of the box. And we'll make this just a little bit bigger, that way it encompasses all of it. Okay, we'll set the multiplier to 4. Let's go ahead and change the color to something with a little bit more red in it. We'll change our shadow resolution there. Also make sure this is visible to the render. And in our custom map, we'll just click and drag our Kelvin temperature. With the default material selected, I'm going to rename this to Studio Floor. I'm going to set the color to something extremely dark, almost the value of black. And we'll simply apply this to the box. Now for our torus, we would like to have some reflection in there. So what we're going to do is click on the second default material here. We'll rename this Showcase Model. and choose the Mental Ray Template Architectural and Design. In here, we're going to simply change our reflectivity to 0.8, our glossiness to 0.5, and our samples to 30. We'll also change the color just a bit, and render this again. Now that we have a good foundation, the last thing that we're going to do is make a few final tweaks to our material and then hide our box. So let's click on the box here. We'll then right click and go to the object properties. Inside, we want to actually deactivate the ability for the camera to see it. So let's uncheck visible to camera. We'll then modify the color of our material a little bit, making it a bit brighter. What I want to do is I want to take my box and I actually want to move this down just a bit. And then I will also center the pivot to the object and scale this up. Also change the dimensions of my fill light so that it encompasses everything. And actually create a secondary fill light. Last but not least, for this situation, I'm going to take all of these lights and I'm going to attach them to the actual spline. This way, as we play the animation, the lighting setup will actually dynamically follow the object. Here, I've actually loaded up Mike Jensen's decimated model from our mech DVD on e3d.com. Utilizing this model as a focal point, I've set up the lights in the exact same way that we had previously, with a few minor changes to things such as white point. I've also hid the box during the rendering, and I've created a fill light on top and a fill light on the bottom. Once it's rendered with a simple material, you can see that we achieve a really nice render that would be perfect for post-production and then later on the portfolio.